or, or do something that they don't get to do when they're making that multi-million dollar paycheck. You know, it's very few actors in Hollywood, and, and Robert De Niro and Bruce Willis are probably a couple of them, that basically they sign on to do the movie, leave them alone, they're going to do their job. Uh, they say Bruce Willis won't take direction from anybody. He comes in, does his interpretation of the character, you don't like it, screw you. You've already signed the contract. You've already paid him. He don't care. Right. Now, we, we, we got a caller in that has a question. Caller, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. How you doing? It's James. How you doing, Gary? Harry? Hey, James. Hey, um, I guess a big question towards Eric. The portal in the gentleman's closet, um, you know, how what, what uh, acknowledgement do you get that there's a portal there, and can you tell it was an exit portal, an inner, inner portal, and can you tell it was just one portal in the house, and then how did you close it? Okay, I'm going to let <clears throat> Megan handle that one uh, as far as the closing it, but as far as the particular portal that was in Markham's house, if I recall right, that was an external portal. Um as far as how can you tell there's a portal there, usually you can see a whirl of almost like a heat wave. Um, oftentimes you can, and you can also see the energy, obviously, from the astral, when you're astraling. And Megan, how do you close them? Um, yes, so actually I've seen portals in person as well, too. Um, Eric, you and I actually worked that case where the uh, portal was right in front of the heat register, mm-hmm. but it was freezing cold. Right. So, and uh, the EMF pinged right in that one spot. Um, so that's how we can indicate a portal in the physical realm. However, um, when we go astral, I could always tell there's a portal in the house because my face heats up. And I just kind of follow it, and the hotter it gets, the hotter... Uh, closer I am to finding this portal. And yes, there is like energy threads through, through the air. Sometimes there's colors. Um, I've seen one that almost looked like a, a tiny tornado. Um, our method is to kind of squish it in and down using our own energies. And then depending on what type of portal it is, I have put a sigil or uh, bound it in some manner to never reopen. If and, I might, yeah. I, what caused that that portal I open personally did not his... detect this portal. I was laying in bed reading a book, and my favorite <laughs> cat was laying on my chest. Now, this cat's like super mellow, and once he gets comfortable and cutting off circulation to <laughs> that side of my body, he ain't going to move. Mm-hmm. He jerked up, stared at that closet and ran. I've had that cat for almost 17 years. I have never seen him exhibit that kind of behavior. That was so out of character that that's what prompted me to get in touch of get in touch with Coop and ask, you know, if there was something that could be done cuz he was looking right at that closet was terrified of something and just and, and ran. I looked yeah. in the closet. I didn't know if there was something in it, so of course I'm going into the closet, digging around. Look, <laughs> there was nothing in there that I could perceive. So cats being able to see in the low infrared, I'm thinking there was some kind of image that his eyes could pick up that mine couldn't. But I know after they came through, I haven't had similar... Now, my house is actively haunted, mm-hmm. but the spirits, you know, they know, leave my stuff alone and leave right. my cats you, alone, you, and I don't care an if you're here. Yeah. Right. You, you have an agreement with your spirits. Right. I mean, I've been downstairs in the studio talking on the air or something talk, and heard footsteps upstairs. Mm-hmm. Both cats were downstairs with me. I live alone. I go upstairs with a shotgun and a pistol because I think somebody's robbing my house and they ain't going to get away with it. Every room of the house searched, 
nobody. Every window still locked from the inside. Every door still locked from the inside. My doors have safety chains across them. (laughs) There's no way, even if they had a key to get in, they couldn't have reached in and put those safety chains back in place. I mean, I literally searched that house floor to ceiling and the attic. There was nobody in there, but the 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 sound of somebody tramping down the hall was unmistakable. I and, heard and the this, footsteps. But that's what we have to tell clients too: is uh, you always want to pay attention to your cats and dogs. If they're acting normal one day, and all of a sudden they're terrified of a specific room, and they will not go in that room from that point, then that's when you need to call somebody in. Mm-hmm. Now, James, did you have another question? Well, you've heard my, yeah. you know I was, about I was how I've got, to I brought what, that tape what, recorder um, to the first convention may have and played with that the EVP. To begin with. Right. All right, say it again, James. What what event opened that portal in his closet to begin with, or was it there when he moved into the house? So we can't we can't always tell. Uh, you, you know, some it, it depends. There's a whole lot of variables. Uh, there's one case that we had that we are we're pretty sure it's and it sounds crazy, but we're pretty sure it was cross ley lines because of the fact that there is no other explanation for that particular case. Um, you know, Ouija boards could open portals. Um, certain rituals could open portals. There, there's a, uh, there's different variables. I don't know. I can't give you specific whys. With, uh, with yeah, well, I was just I curious. There's, what, there's, did he move into that house? Was it there already, or was it something he did, or no. something somebody did? or My house was built in 1962 by... A guy who later became sort of a local celebrity weather weather man, you know, soft news dude. Uh, and another family bought it from him. I guess he got once he got rich and famous, he moved into a bigger house. And the little girl that grew up in that house always talked about the old man that was in it. Hmm. So the the house and plus you know. Being paranormal investigator myself, I think once you open the door to the existence, you, it's sort of like shining a light, you know, shining a light in in the void, saying, "Hey, here you go." So it's sort of like an old, you know, all spirits welcome sign on the doors. I believe, I think, belief actually increases the amount of activity. It can, uh, but here. It- and, uh, and I'll add too that certain off-world races do open portals as well. There's so, there's some races that travel interdimensionally, some astrally, um, and they open portals as well. Those we seal, and we usually use ice on those because ice does work effectively on some races. So yeah, port also. portals. Just see portals as gateways. They can be alien. They can be spirit. It. it, it <laughs> They're just gateways. You know, it could have been that that portal was open the whole time I moved in. And it wasn't it until that back. night something negative moved through it. Right. That might be the, the entrance that the resident spooks use to go grocery shopping or whatever. That might be that might have been their, you know, that might have been their door in and out. But something yeah. negative came through that thing. And real quick, oh. Nikki is saying really... So with reptilians, we use ice. With most of the other races, we use fire. Now, James, did you have another question before we cut you off? No, that that was it. Thanks very much for the uh, answers of the questions. Okay, thank you, James. Excellent. Thank you for calling, James. Yep, bye. Can I uh, I add to that real quick? Yeah. Uh, How they're they're open. Um, There was one case that I dealt with that... uh, a kid, a teenager, whatever, was uh, using a Ouija board and opened it that way. Right, right, right. Ouija boards open gateways anyway if you don't close them. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's by definition a portal. Um, yeah. But do they shift? Not generally. 
Because you get asked that too. Normally portals don't move. Now alien portals do. Have you seen that one, Megan? Um, I have actually seen a non-alien portal move as well. Okay. Okay. So that was the portal house in New York, and it seemed like there was a tunnel of portal systems throughout the whole neighborhood, and the energy was just popping up everywhere. And so every time we went to the house, the portal location had changed. Um, With aliens, yes, definitely. They move around a lot, and sometimes they don't even look like a a normal portal. Um, There was that other case when I walked into the whole room, everything looked almost like mist in the room. And, um, again, on my face, I felt like a really weird heat wave. And right. knowing that this was an alien case, again, used the ice. And then all that mist, like, turned into little ice drops and fell to the floor. It was so it was so neat. But, um, yeah, no, I don't like alien portals. Those things are creepy. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not fun. And Nikki wants to know if we've dealt with vortexes. Um, I don't think we have. I'm thinking we've done this too long. Um, vortexes, no. Portals, portals, easy. Vortexes, no. Vortexes are pain. Um, 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 moving along, Chris. We haven't gotten to you, Chris and Brent. I'll be thinking of your questions. What are your questions? <laughs> um. Well. It's interesting. I was kind of looking online for my questions. (laughs) And I came across this interesting topic, and it said that um, it's speculated that the government has made and is hiding Bigfoot because he's an intelligent being. No. (laughs) I know. No. With that, though, I couldn't, I couldn't believe is, it when I read it. <laughs> there is a facility in California. And real quick, Nikki, how do you close something like that down? For Texas, we'd have to research. Megan, that's your new task. <laughs> um, so there is a there is supposed to be a facility in California where, for example, the Bigfoot that they found, there, I believe there are two dead, two deceased, one living, or vice versa. There might have been two living, one dead. When Mount St. Helens erupted in 1984, I think it was. It was either 81 or 84. I was, at, I was sitting in church when Mount St. Helens blew up. I don't even, I, I remember the window. I think it was 81. 81. I think it was 81. Yeah. <laughs> it was 81. That sounds right. <clears throat> yeah. um, no, Nikki, bag it'll be fine. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, they sent in the National Guard. I have never been able to vet this. Um, it makes sense based on certain areas of Fort Lewis I've been on. But they took, the, the National Guard came, they took the living Bigfoot and the deceased body. They took them to Fort Lewis. They stayed there for two weeks and they shipped them to this facility in California. I'm not sure where this facility is, but there you go. Um, so there's, a, there's the, yeah, and I'm going to lead right into <laughs> my first question because it does have to do with Bigfoot and it kind of correlates with what you're talking about, kind of. So with Bigfoot, we know that the government, well, Washington state government anyway, has come out and said that if there is Bigfoot, I'm reading. Um, So if there is a Bigfoot, then we aren't allowed to kill him because he is an endangered species. So, okay, with that being said, if the Washington state government is going to come out and say, if there is a Bigfoot, does that mean that there is, is a possibility he's alive? And if... Bigfoot is alive, which I know he is because, mm-hmm. well, I've heard his knocks. I've seen his tracks. Gary can tell you he's alive because he's chased him. <laughs> um, I think the question, Eric, is why would the government come out and say something like that if they didn't believe it? Well, that's kind of 
I agree. The government yeah. 